Triangle Fire Inside Athens. I'm Nick. I play guitar and sometimes make noises. I'm Tandy and I do vocals and backup drums and tambourine and whatever. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm Steve. I play bass and drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joseph, and I'm the drummer. And we are trying to fire. Woo! It was written by um, our former chairman, uh, the late John Farmer. So we always try to keep this in. We always try to keep him as part of our set. So <laughs> it's concrete expansion. I'm waiting for him. I was doing you. Okay. Fire actually started in late April 2011. Um, as I've touched on before, Nick and I were in several bands together before, and you know, we we're pretty did pretty well for ourselves. Um, and we have a pretty big following, and uh, you know, many people have told us, you know, why do you guys keep changing the, you know, changing bands, changing the name? Y'all should just, you know. And we said, well, because it's different sounds, different bands, different members. And they said, well, you need to keep the, to pick one name and just keep it. And that be like the representation of you, the two of you, because we're sick of making flyers and nobody knowing who it is whenever you come back to town. And so now we put on all of our flyers, Nick and Tandy's band. And so, <laughs> and so you know, um, with that, we got a call one day, and uh, we weren't actively in a band at the time. We were doing some acoustical busking type stuff, um, playing for a carnival um, band uh, that we were in, um, or playing a band that was that played with a, a carnival. I don't remember any of those days. Y'all told me I played in a circus band. I still don't believe it. Well, I mean, because we ran the, the games for the carnival. So anyway, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, we weren't actively in a band, and we got a call one day and to play up in New York for the Tompkins Square Park Riot Festival, which is a festival that they have every year to uh, commemorate and 
you know, remember a, a riot that happened in Tompkins Square Park up in uh, Lower East Side of... Oh, yeah. Cops killed a bunch of people just for being there. Yeah, I mean, it was ugly, it was brutal. Um, the ultimate representation of a police state. Um, they came in, I mean, they, they beat women, children, whether you were doing anything wrong or not, uh, they beat you, they killed you, or they killed several, many. Yeah. Um, and it was just a very horrible, horrible situation that happened. And so the people that lived there refused to let it go and refused to let it be forgotten. So every year they set up a punk fest and um, kind of as a fuck you to the cops, like we're still here, fuck you. Um, and so anyway, Nick and I had always wanted to play this festival because it's something that, you know, we, we have a lot of, you know, friends and family up in that area of New York and, you know, we wanted to be there for them and with them for that and um, you know also because of the anti-police stature that we have that you know personally uh, so anyway so we got a call asking us to play this festival um, and we Nick told me he said well I mean we don't even have a band and so the guy made a joke and said well can't you make one because Nick and I would, you know, like I said before, we were in and out of a lot of bands, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so Nick was like, ha, ha, ha. And then he tell, he hangs up the phone and tells me about it. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I really want to fucking play this festival. It's something that I've always wanted to do. Um, can we make it work? And so I started thinking, thinking, thinking. And I was like, why not? So... He said, okay, fuck it. And I said, call him back right now and tell him we're going to fucking play. We just don't know what we're doing yet. So that's, you know, where, you know, we started putting together the band at that point. And, you know, we had several short member lineups in and out at that point. Um, and yeah, it started with Daniel and Ant. Yeah, it started with Daniel and Tonka. Uh, Tonka uh, play. Daniel was on ba uh, bass and Tonka was on drums. And Tonka actually is an amazing drummer. But he also does, uh, like... <laughs> He's in a hip-hop band. He was yeah. in a hip-hop band, yeah. That was yeah. awesome. And they had just gotten signed, and so he needed to focus on that. But he also taught drums, and he also... He was in, like, a Scottish marching band Yeah, that's band what I'm trying thing. to think, yeah. Where they, you know, do the kilt, <coughs> they do the festivals yeah. and such. Um, and the they do, events. you know, and they compete and everything. So he could not commit to the, you know, time and everything that we were looking at, wanting to do. And so he gracefully bowed out after, after playing, playing our, one show. Our that first was show. impromptu, wasn't even, it was like, we barely made it on the flyer. It was so quick of a, you know, hey, do y'all want to play? Yeah, sure. Three days later, we play it. So it wasn't even in an Tucker, official show. Georgia. Yeah, in and Tucker. I, I don't even remember. The last great watering hole with Hermits of Suburbia. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I do too. So, um, anyway, so. I've been carried out of that place a couple of times. Tonka had to bow out, and we were like, well, fuck, we go on tour. Because, oh, we, we made a tour around the Tompkins show. Um, and so we were like, well, fuck, we're about to go on tour and play this big fest, blah, blah, blah. And we don't have a fucking drummer now. <laughs> Great. Which is the story of our lives. Um, and not now. <laughs> yeah, not now. <laughs> um, and so we were like, shit. And I remembered a guy that, well, he was a friend of ours, um, but I was like, well, what about John? And so he said, damn, that's a great fucking idea, because he was a fucking immaculate musician, immaculate, amazing person, cannot say enough good things. But anyway, so I called him up and I said, hey, blah, 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 and he was like, fuck yeah, I'll do it. Um, and turns out he told us later on that he had always wanted to play in a band with me and Nick. And so when we asked him to play, he was, it was like an honor to him to get to play. And we were honored by getting to play with him. So anyway, big love fest happened. And <laughs> we, 
But the problem was, was he lived in Greenville, South Carolina, and we are in Athens, Georgia. And so that's like a good two-hour drive um, one way. And so he, you know, we sent him some files of some rough recordings. He practiced at home, and he would come down and spend a couple days, and we would practice, practice, practice for like, I mean, 12-some-odd hours. Now, you're actually missing a part of that story. The, the crazy part is, is that they talk a quit just like two weeks before we were leaving to go on tour, and John came down here for that entire week before we left for the week and yeah. learned all of it in no, that's, one week. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I'm saying right there. Like, And we recorded a demo, and he helped press all that shit. Yeah, exactly. We did, like, uh, burnt copy presses and stuff just so we had something. Yeah. So sure within a two-week time frame, we literally finished writing an, an entire set, taught a new drummer, made <coughs> CDs the whole nine yards and went on the road and we played our first official show while on tour. Um, yeah, it was in, wasn't it at the radio room, which was the gyp Tipsy Gypsy at the time? <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, so anyway, so that's how Triangle Fire got started. And then, um, you know, time and years pass and a lot of shit in and out. Um, we just toured all the time. That's all we kept down. Yeah, we just toured. We didn't play... We played some local shows. We actually never even played Atlanta. Yeah, until we got, until with, these we guys. got with these guys. That was the first time we ever played Atlanta. No shit. Yeah. yeah. No, we played, played one time for oh, the New Year's Eve show. Our last show was our first show in Atlanta, and it was with a totally different lineup. But... uh the first like real show that we had like as a con and, like we all knew that was triangle fire's last show like we weren't playing with that lineup anymore we didn't know where everything was going so it was kind of like that's not really anything but like our first real show as a band that's going to continue to play was with you guys in atlanta yeah yeah at the catacombs yeah that show was fun <laughs> yeah it was yeah it was i was super nervous yeah i know i was yeah. a little bit too yeah I'm not <laughs> it was still fun <laughs> Um, we still yeah. have fun. Yeah. Um. I'm a mechanic, and we just kept playing, and we never had a name forever, forever and ever and ever, and finally, because uh, the guy that was playing in the busking band with us was actually, he just was like, well, I'm naturally a bass player, we might as well just uh, let me play bass. I was like, all right, cool. So we started writing some stuff, and we kept going, and everybody kept going, we need a a band name. And <laughs> we, is, we gotta send that dude a band name because yeah. he's gotta promote us and we were like For the okay. Tompkins show. So and the was, tour. Yeah, it was like okay. And then um and then we all sat down and kinda had our, our thoughts on it. And Daniel was like, you know, I want something that like has meaning and Tandy was like, I do too. And then Tandy was like, I want something that's like feminist but political. 
and I was but like, but not preachy. Yeah, and I was like, okay, and I was like, and I want something that kind of stands for something. Like I don't want just some weird name or anything like that. So it was like the next day after that band practice, I was pulling a car in, and it was the actually I think it was the one hundredth anniversary of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory debacle in New York City and they were having this big thing on a customer's car that I was pulling in on NPR about what had happened and the significance of what had happened and why it meant so much to the world and I was sitting there listening to it because the political piece of it is that's where we got minimum wage. The tra tragedy of it is People had unjust work conditions and it caught fire and nobody was there to help them so they jumped out of the window in fear for their life because dying that way or burning to death, I, I mean, I could see where that would be yeah. a choice you would have to make. I don't want to burn to death. It was on well, TV. On TV. Yeah. The feminist part was it was all women yeah. and children. Yeah, there was not a male that died on no, that because... and they're falling in the middle of the street on fire. It's like... Yeah, because they the men would actually lock the women and children into the room to meet quota. They weren't allowed to leave until they met quota of making uniforms. And, you know, in there with all the chemicals of fabrics and this and that and the, um, you, you know, the they would light up the smoke. And this somebody actually put their cigarette out and put it in a trash basket and it wasn't all the way dis or extinguished. So it lit fire and they were locked in there. No. And they were on the like 15th story or something like that of it a was building. Up there. I can't remember the exact um, story, but it was up there. So, you know, they actually, set, you know, the whole place was set fire and they were busting windows out and, you know, women were leaping to down 15 flights or however many flights, I can't remember right now. Um, to their deaths because, you know, they're like at least trying to escape. Um, they had a, um, an elevator, which back then in 2000, I mean, 1911, that was you think yeah. um, about the elevator and the building conditions and stuff, you know, I mean, they literally was like a box with a rope um, and that was their elevated system. Um, and so they, I think they got two different rounds of women down before the, the cable, the cable broke, broke from right. the from the heat and you know that actually plummeted and killed several people yeah. um it was a whole yeah it was deal. just horrible 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 situation um so so yeah so we needed that to be remembered that was the si significance piece of it on a side note though i don't know if you two actually know this so like that particular band practice at the end of it we were at wits in on a band name so we all agreed that our homework that night which me and Daniel actually worked together at the same place so our homework was come up with band names so like everybody had we had some awful band names yeah. holy god <laughs> I mean like we I think everybody submitted like probably 60 some odd each and they were awful and they were, we were like don't yeah. rule anything out at this yeah. point write them all down yeah so actually the funny thing was is that next day i wrote down triangle fire because i was like i want to drop the shirt waist because like you want to change it yeah i want to change it a little bit triangle fire was actually when i presented it everybody went yeah <laughs> and then i was like let me explain so I explained it a little bit, but it was totally shunned <laughs> at first. Like, it was knocked down before it even had a chance. And I was like, let me tell y'all what it means. And then they kind of listened to me and they were like, whoa, you know, that has a great meaning. I kind of, I, I can get with that. I was, deep. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool. I was like, so let's do that then. But like, yeah, it was shut. <laughs> <laughs> Triangle Fire was not on the table.
This is rubber. <laughs> All right. And you're good whenever you see I was just thinking that. <laughs> Septic cyanide. that we have not played live yet we're going to attempt it tomorrow night right now the name is called gypsy why not why not attempt that right yeah why not well why not? mainly because we don't have lyrics but that's okay it's still fun yeah yeah right interesting ride because I'm in it. Oh. Oh, good one. 
I'm not always the easiest person to get along with sometimes, and I have, I have issues with uh, being outspoken, so that's always fun, and we all do, so that makes this really fun. Really fun. Yeah. <laughs> keeps we all have a lot of personality, too, mm -hmm. and keeps that's really awesome. Keeps yeah. us from going crazy. Yeah, that's true, that's <laughs> true, too. I always try to add some sort of comedic experience to everything we do. Mm -hmm. So does Steve. But he, he gets it on a totally different level. It, it can get a little Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was yeah, oh yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely if there was in between NC-17 and Rated R, that's where M Finger would lie. Or like mm -hmm. Sweetwater. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> rated. That's, that's more like rated... Uh, it was just mature. <laughs> it was just mature. mature you just had to be. <laughs> you, yeah, you can't watch it as a kid. <laughs> it might scar you for life. <laughs> yeah, no. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> the funny thing is, is like all we do is go these places to play. Yeah. That's all we do. We go with no intent but just to go there and play the best we possibly can. And we just end up get, like seeing some of the weirdest shit yep. in these bars we yeah. play. And I also would like to say that I like to party. Oh, we know you like, <laughs> we know you like <laughs> to party. So I go there with an intent to rock the fuck out. <laughs> rock out <laughs> and, and party. And party. Rock and your arse party. party. There you go. Nothing I wrong can with agree that. with that. My name is Steve, and I like to party. <laughs> if this Hi, is an addiction, woo! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Joseph, and I'm a crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he has his moments for sure. Mm -hmm. I admit it. I'm an asshole. So you get that que You get that question next. Oh damn! You should get that one. Okay, life is interesting because uh, you're just gonna go ahead and do it, aren't you? What? You're gonna take mine. Just my name is Steve, and I like to party. <laughs> 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 no, life is interesting because you never know what the next day is gonna hold. And Good point. It's awesome because I like surprises. What's your favorite town to play in? Oh, I like Atlanta so far. Well. When we played <laughs> Staten Island, I really enjoyed Staten Island. That yeah, was Staten Island was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Staten Island was fun. Island's fun. What about uh, you, Tammy? What's your favorite town? Baltimore. Oh man, you took the you you took the old whore. Uh, actually, I was really fond of uh, playing Richmond. I always liked playing Richmond. God, I want to play there so bad. Yeah. Richmond Nora was always. Sushi. Uh, Man, I played there a bunch, man. Like, yeah, but that first was my band. favorite in Richmond. Yeah, and I, we played... There was this one place called McCormick's Pub. <laughs> that's and the word for everything. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the lightning round, Nick. No, that's lightning shit, <laughs> that shit fucking had the stairs like my basement, and we dropped all every amp down it. Like, that was always fun. I always remember that. What's your favorite town, Joseph? I would love to play... California specifically for the reason that there were some you know older punk bands like the Germs you had Circle Jerks you had Black Flag you know and they had these all these shows and it was just so chaotic there were even videos of uh, like for example they have a show and then somebody drums on the fucking drum set or you have stage dives you have circle pits you know and then there's some there's some shows like uh, I don't know, just ha house backyard shows. Just, you know, and they pack a lot of people. Yeah. But, you know? And That'd be fun. That would be really cool. What breaks my heart about, like, places like New York and California is most of the kids there take that shit for granted. Yeah. Like, because they grow up there, they live there, and it's just an everyday thing for them. But for, you know, living in, you know, small towns or you know, outside of the main line, which we're lucky because we do live, you know, Athens and Atlanta are, you know, big hot spots for people to stop at. So we do get some good shit coming through, oh, but absolutely. it's not like all day, every day, like, you know, towns, yeah. you know, the, the larger cities and, which I mean, Atlanta surprisingly a, is, is like one of the larger cities. That's a good scene too. But... Yeah. It's getting better for sure. It is getting oh, better. Yeah. It comes yeah. and goes. Like back in the day when I was younger, it was fucking amazing 
to go to shows. Summer of That's like yeah. it was in New York. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then so, but now it's it's hit or miss, you know. Yeah. But but it's building back up and and I feel honored to be a part of building it back up. Likewise. So that's that's why I play in Triangle Fires for the kids, you know, to try to give them something that I had when I was growing up, give them an outlet um you know, somewhere to go and be who they are, genuinely, a place to express themselves no matter who they are or, you know, what what they want to be. Or even if they just want to not even think about any of it and just go and just let fucking go or have fun. Like, I mean, we've taken some kids out to shows that, like aren't even into punk or anything like that and they've had the fucking night of their lives getting in the in the pit and and it's just mm-hmm. adorable watching them get in there and just go to town and then like they're just so you fucking excited you know it, and that's what it is like watching the excitement on on anyone's face but especially the younger kids faces whenever they get to experience that like it just it, it it's a drug to me like I get high off of that watching, you know, their energy and I don't know. But I know no one asked me, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. <laughs> say it. What's your favorite band right now, Nick? My favorite band right now. Ooh. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! I listen to so much crap, man. Oh like, shit! I, like yeah. that's like a really hard. That's like question. asking, what's your favorite movie? Or what was your first favorite band? Oh. That one's hard too. Well, Dude, the Doors was you definitely not. Right. to smoke weed. I was gonna say you said the Doors. Dude, my, my, my 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 first favorite band was definitely the Doors, but then like a bomb rush of like so many other bands that I was listening to. Because dude, I liked the Beatles. I liked. I mean, shit. I was a product of the '80s too. I remember listening to Motley Crue for the first time, going, "Oh my God." These people are devil worshippers. It's amazing. Why, why am I not doing this with my life? And mm-hmm. like, I, I don't know. I mean, there was just so much because my sister was twelve years older than me too. So I mean, as of right now, what am I listening to a lot? I listen to a lot of Despel Omega. I listen to a lot of Piss Blood and Mosquito. Piss Blood's from Portland and Mosquito's from Australia. So super sweet guys. Yeah. I, yeah, that's what I'm listening to. What about you, Steve? Man, I listen to a whole bunch of stuff. My first favorite bands were Kiss and Rush. I was just going to say Rush. Kiss and Rush. My cousin made me listen to those albums when I was like four years old, and that was it. I was done. You knew Rush? what you wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. Made me listen to 2112. I heard Neil Peart, and I was like, whoa, Peart, this is awesome. And then, uh, lately I've been listening to a bunch of hair metal. I've been going I've been through a massive 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 Motley Crue a lot lately, man. Just We've been going lately. through a crazy hair metal phase, man. And I'm like, <laughs> I'll call him up and we'll be like, I'm like, what are you listening to? And I'll hear like, <laughs> I'll hear something crazy, or I'll be listening to something crazy. A lot of hair metal. But my favorite band to turn it off to right now and just rock out to is Municipal Waste. I love yes. those guys. They're freaking rad. Yes. What about you, Justin? Oh my goodness. <sighs> I'm just like you guys. I've I like I started off listening to a lot of punk and then experimented to like Nick with the Doors and a lot of um, even even like some jazz bands from like the 1930s. Like uh, oh yeah, yeah. And then it was funny. And then like once I turned maybe 10 years old, I was I started getting into Celtic Frost and then Slayer and then. Um, but even in then, you know, listening to all this music, I was just like paying attention to the drums, you know, the, the, uh, the dr- like the double bass and then the uh, fast pace, you know, the, and it, it, that is what inspires me to play drums. Well, that's so, good to know. I mean, I mean, a lot of, I guess you could, and then like uh, DRI and of course Municipal Waves. Death, dude. Possessed. He's a, he, I mean, well, he's a huge like old school punk band death oh, fan. Yeah. Like, and that's awesome. Like when I saw those posters, I was like, dude, that's cool. They're, <laughs> they're so good. 
Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Tandy, you're up. What are you listening to? A lot of stuff. I am so insanely eclectic. Um, I've been listening to a lot of circus contraption because I like anything from like old blues to to circus music to uh, Romanian music to metal. Like this morning, I woke up. Okay, so last <laughs> night I go to bed, and before I went to bed, I was listening to Billie Holiday, and. Um, Thank you. Mm-hmm. And this morning I woke up and I rolled over and I was like, I want to listen to Megadeth. And so I put, like, before I even got out of bed, I put yeah. on a, uh, Count that, like, Countdown for Extinction. Yeah. Or Countdown to Extinction. I was like, you should put it on Peace Sells, but who's buying? And she was like, I want to listen to this one. Yeah, like, and cool. so he, he leaves and he comes back down and he's like, you're still listening to that? That's that song. And that yeah. is that. Without- and that's Tuesday. <laughs> Next is Wednesday. She's off Mount Olympus and down here with us normal food now. found the music business has changed over time. It's a lot of social media. Yeah. Back yeah. in the day, you would fly air, be word of mouth. Yeah, mm-hmm. or cassette tapes. Or, and just people seeing you at shows, because there was no YouTube, there was no Facebook for them to see you. Hell first day no. go, yeah, I remember no. the days uh-huh. back in the day whenever you would have to mail off a self-addressed envelope, or in stamped envelope, to get, to wait for fucking six months to get a catalog in the mail so that you could go through the catalog and circle all the things that you wanted which was the whole fucking catalog yeah you'd send for like look out or profane or anything and then you would mail off and you would have to mail back and wait for them to get it in process and everything with like 
your money you would put that was back when you still put cash in an envelope mm -hmm. and uh you would mail it back and then you would have to wait for them to process because everything was done by hand by back then no, nothing was computerized so that took a long time and then they would snail mail it back to you before you know you had overnight mail and two-day delivery and all that bullshit um yeah. yeah, one week was two day delivery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got it in a week. You were like, "Whoa, yeah, I'm you were important!" Like, this is lightning fast. Damn. But yeah, um, and everything is digital now, and it's heartbreaking because I love physical copies of things. I love, you know, like opening up uh, CDs or records and going through the booklets and the artwork and, you know, reading the lyrics and... All right, here's a fun question all of from that stuff. All, all of us. What was your favorite thing to look at when you first opened up an album or, like, anything? Like, did you look at the lyrics first, the artwork first? The artwork. The artwork? The artwork. I would say the whole packaging. Thank yous. Me. Because, dude, I remember whenever... If they were thinking a band... Yeah, I love that would make you think I would read that, that band is probably yeah. kick ass yeah. too. So yeah. I'm finding uh, that yeah. fucking band. So yeah. you're like fucking looking on all your catalogs yeah. trying to find that, that band yeah. next. That's oh, how yeah. you would have to do it, exactly. And then and you would find out that that band's coming to your town or fucking 10 towns over, and you're like, dude, who wants to go on a road trip? Let's go fucking yeah. see this band. Yeah, yeah, and that's how you would have to do it. And that's how you found out about things, you know, besides word of mouth and all of that and going to shows. And the opening bands or the people <coughs> touring with the touring band, um, all of that. But yeah, you would go through the thank yous or whenever you would listen to interviews of, you know, who inspired you. Blah, you weren't blah, listening blah. to any interviews, man. You were reading them in the magazine. Yeah, or I mean, if they had them like the rare incident when they had them like on like MTV back when MTV actually had music, you know, and they would say, you know, I was inspired by this band. You're like, oh, making a list. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah, now they'll just find you on YouTube or yeah. Facebook. And they'll or make Grindr. a determination if they think you suck before they get to see you. But, but back in the day, they'd get trapped. You'd, they'd have to come you to you. <laughs> you have to come <laughs> to see them. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> but, you know, actually, a lot of social media has been pretty good to us. We've had people come from almost Alabama to come and see us. Yeah. Just, yeah, just out, yeah. Just out of nowhere. It definitely has its pros and cons. Yep. Um, I remember like back in the day whenever you would go out to the show and you didn't even know who was playing, you were just going to the show. Mm -hmm. And you know, you would be there and you know, they would have five, six band bills and it was just a night of it. And that's all that mattered was that you were there and that you were at the show. Yeah, you saw and punk show yeah. or metal show. Yeah. I'm in the mood for some metal. You didn't even get past that. Or even that the artwork. The <laughs> you were like, what? Metal? Hell yeah, yeah. let's go listen to some Or metal. even like the artwork on the flyer. Like you had no fucking idea who, who these bands were or anything about them. All you knew is the artwork looks cool, I'm there. Exactly. You know, and so you would go out to it and, you know, and then that's how. And that's my first function. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. I can agree with that. <laughs> God, we're old. <laughs> yeah, I was the only oh boy. Since what year I was born. <laughs> yeah, none of us were going to do it. Hey, he said it Joseph too. did too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't give a fuck. We got the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I reckon I'm about half of this shit. <laughs> All right. Next. Watch it. Do you know? What? Do you know? What happened to it? What, what did happen to it? Yeah, it what happened to the circle pit? I'm still curious where the where the that thing is. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> They're like, man, I gotta have me a Lord to have three beers to get out of there now, man. I'm gonna uh, tell you. Yeah. Or you have like a bloody face and all sorts of shit. <laughs> Triangle Fire has been prone to have fights at their shows. <laughs> Not our problem. Yeah, riots, riot gear, problems. Yeah. Fuck it. What happened to the circle pit? Yeah. <laughs> 